Well, thank you so, so much. What an honor it is to be here with you today. When I was 19 years old, I was a Chick-fil-A operator in Birmingham, Alabama. I was hiring team members to come and work for me and in walked this gentleman. I thought, I need to hire this guy. Not because I knew him, not that I knew his name, but he was good looking. And I figured that is the best reason of all to hire somebody to work when I was 19 years old. He came to work with me and I began to fall in love with him. And I thought, I've got a problem on my hands. This young man is going to college every day. He's meeting all kinds of girls. He's sitting in class with them. He has the opportunity to go out with these young ladies. And I'm here at work, working Monday through Saturday in a dorky looking Chick-fil-A uniform, smelling like chicken. I'll never be able to impress him that way. And then I realized, but I'm his boss. I'm making out his schedule every week. He doesn't have to be free on Friday nights or Saturday nights. And so it worked. We have now been married for 45 years. Over the course of these years together, the Lord has blessed us with an incredible family. We have four children, all married, 16 grandchildren, and number 17 on the way. The Lord has been gracious to us. I am grateful for my family. I am grateful for this opportunity to be able to share with you today. As we begin this week of prayer, our approach to God our Father is twofold. One, it is to acknowledge His uniqueness. The other is that we are to acknowledge our undeniable need for him. When we think about his uniqueness, I think about the fact that he is an ever-present God. When I was a little girl, I remember sitting on a wooden bench and looking across the lake, and on the other side of the lake were these huge mountains of North Carolina. I looked at those mountains every day that I was there at camp, but one particular time we came together, I was sitting on the bench and the fog had come in and you could see the lake, but you couldn't see the mountains at all. Our camp director asked us, how many of you believe those mountains are there? I was 10 years old, I was the first one to raise my hand. I had no doubt those mountains hadn't gone anywhere. Our camp director went on to say, the Bible tells us that God is, will never leave us or forsake us. He is with us wherever we go. Whether or not you see him, whether or not you sense him, you can trust, you can know that he is always with you. That should give you a sense of confidence and comfort in your life. But we are not only to acknowledge his uniqueness, we must acknowledge our undeniable need for him. I remember as John and I left to be missionaries in Brazil, we had two small children with us and the biggest challenge we had facing us was to learn Portuguese. Learning that language was so hard. I remember one particular day, it had been a really tough day. I went home and I closed the door in my room and I began to cry. And I began to tell the Lord, you have really made a mistake, Lord, to send us here. I can't learn this language. This is so hard for me. And then I said to God, God, I want you to know I can't do this. And then there was a pause in our conversation. And although it wasn't an audible voice, it was a clear message that came to the Lord for me. And that day God told me, Trudy, you don't have to do this. I will do it through you. I recognize the fact that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. You know why? Because he delights in taking situations where human strength is lacking in order to demonstrate the greatness of his provision and his power in our lives. We have a need for God, our Father. God is a unique Father, and we certainly need him. Well, I kind of feel like I'm among family here. I feel like I've got some Chick-fil-A fans in the room. Is that right? All right. And the secret has already been spilled that if you can sit through this chapel time and maybe even take a few notes on your way out, we will promise you a free Chick-fil-A sandwich for you to enjoy sometime this week. I don't know if our local operator Dave is here or not, but he is incredible in your community. He is right here. I think you wanna thank him for the Chick-fil-A that you get to enjoy. Let me tell you a little bit about our history in this family business. My dad ran a restaurant for 18 plus years before he realized actually he could debone the breast of chicken. 
He could put some special season coater on it. He could pressure cook it in a pressure cooker with peanut oil to give it a very unique flavor. He could take that piece of chicken and he could put it on a toasted butter bun and put some pickles on it and call it a chicken sandwich. No one had ever eaten chicken as a sandwich before. And there's where Chick-fil-A came in. Now, when Chick-fil-A came on the scene, my dad became quite popular. People were coming to interview him. They were coming to write up articles about this chicken sandwich that everybody was eating. And he became quite popular in his little bitty restaurant. And the waitress is beginning to complain. And they said, Mr. Kathy, if you're gonna be this popular, you're gonna have to find you a place to office out of. You can't do all this right here in this restaurant. We're trying to serve food to everybody. So my dad got the message and eventually we acquired a piece of property just five minutes from the airport in Atlanta and began to build the building, what we know of today as the support center. Well, our family would stop by there while it was under construction. I remember looking over and seeing what a huge foundation was laid for this building. It was a five-story building. Obviously, the foundation needed to be quite large. But I thought to myself, if you need this kind of foundation for a building, how much more important is the foundation for our own lives? The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in, ba in vain who build it. But you know, I go in and out of that support center on a regular basis, and when I go in there, I can't see the foundation. In fact, I rarely even think about the fact that the foundation is there. But everything that is seen is the result of the unseen. When you go in and eat with us at Chick-fil-A, you think you're just eating in a restaurant that's serving chicken. But here's what you don't see about Chick-fil-A. Back in the 1980s, there was a severe economic recession and we had overextended ourselves. We had a hundred restaurants we were trying to run. And all of a sudden chicken prices were going out the wazoo. It was really difficult to stay in business. And our leadership got together and began to talk about why are we really doing this anyway? Why are we really in business? Maybe you've asked yourself that in your own life. You've kind of felt like your back is up against the wall and you didn't know what to do. And you begin to say, why am I really here, Lord? We asked that at Chick-fil-A, and after a course of a couple of days, we walked away with the reason why we're in business. It gave us clarity for the days ahead. And the purpose that we are in business is to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that's entrusted to us and to have a positive impact on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. Now, when you get that kind of clarity about your purpose, then suddenly you get clarity about your priorities. Now we have over 2,800 restaurants, we have steady sales growth and we are expanding globally. But perhaps the loudest way we honor God is not by having our stores open, but rather by having our stores closed, closed on Sunday. Oftentimes, it's not necessarily what you do, but it's what you don't do that causes others to notice. And it gives you a powerful platform to be able to point them to God, your heavenly father. I believe that we honor God best when we acknowledge our successes. We are commanded, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, whatever decisions you make, whatever, whatever we are able to accomplish in our education, in our abilities, in our talents, or in our career, we are to acknowledge Him. Give Him the glory, the recognition, and he will guide you, and he will make your path straight. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is our Father who hears and responds in our times of success and significance. Someone rarely mentions her, but she's super important to our family, and that's my mother. Mother was a determined lady. She was a lifelong learner. She graduated with a double major in history and religion. She attended seminary. She was a spiritual compass for my dad. She was a cheerleader for her children and certainly a prayer warrior for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She was constantly giving back to the Lord, claiming, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. She was a firm believer that with God, Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. But here's what you need to know about my mom. 
She grew up without an earthly father. At the tender age of five, though, someone let her know that her heavenly father could become her perfect father. After my mother was married and had children, she received the message that her earthly father had passed away. She had never met him before, but she was invited to the funeral and she decided to attend. She went up to the casket and she saw her earthly father for the first time ever in her life. She saw a man who had hurt my granny deeply by leaving her to raise a baby all alone. She was looking at a man who ensured that my mother would be without a strong hand of a godly earthly father. All sorts of things went through her mind, but my mother was filled with an array of emotions, but the strongest of which was forgiveness. She chose to forgive her earthly father and live in the freedom that she did have, a heavenly father. I love this quote from Rick Warren, pastor out at Saddleback Church. It says, we are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of them. You see, God is a relational God. He wants to have a relationship with us. We are created to have a relationship with him. It's very possible that some of you right here in this room have trouble connecting with God as a father because perhaps your own personal baggage that you carry with you is a reflection of not so good earthly father that you've had. Perhaps you see God as unreasonable or even unreliable. But if that describes you, I wanna challenge you to let go of these misconceptions and myths about God so that you can understand the truth of who God really is. He is the Father who hears and responds. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. You see, if you had known my father when he was a young child, I'm almost certain that you would have voted him to be the least likely to succeed. When my dad was a little boy, he had a very severe speech impediment. He could barely even say his name, Truett Cathy. He didn't like school at all. It was very hard for them, for him. Academics and studying just wasn't his thing. He wasn't sports, he couldn't do sports. He wasn't athletic at all. But one day, while he was in elementary school, a teacher gave all the students an assignment. The homework assignment was to go home and find a Bible verse and bring it back to class the next day. My dad, with the help of his mom, brought back into class, written on a little card, a verse from Proverbs 22, one. Do you know what it says? A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And it just so happened that that teacher selected my dad's verse to be the verse of the week, and she wrote it on the blackboard for everybody to see. It is the only recognition that he ever recalls receiving through his time in school. So at the age of 25, he decided he would like to go into the restaurant business because he had been pretty successful selling Coca-Colas out on his front yard as a little boy. At, at, at the age of 25 and single, he opened in 1946 a little restaurant called The Dwarf House, a 24-hour operation, open six days a week. Two years later, he was married, and a few years later, he lost both of his brothers in a plane crash, one of which was his partner in the business. He eventually opened a second restaurant, and he often remarked that having two restaurants seemed like one too many. Until the Lord took care of that second restaurant, he were woken up in the middle of the night at 1.30 in the morning that his second restaurant was on fire. He went to find, tragically, this restaurant burnt to the ground and not knowing exactly what happened or what kind of insurance he had. It was a cold winter night in January that this happened. And he writes in his very first book, it was a terrible time to have a fire. But then again, there's never a good time for a fire. Isn't that true in our own lives? When difficulty strikes, what voice do you listen to? Who will you be in a difficult situation? The easiest thing for my dad to have done would have been to give up, throw in the towel, quit. But every time my dad reflected on this story, he was reminded that three years later, he invented Chick-fil-A. And he said, if it had not been for the fire, I'm not sure I would have ever had the time 
to debone the breast of chicken and invent what we know of today as Chick-fil-A. You see, God never wastes any experiences in our life. He wants to use them for our good and for his glory. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from those negative voices, those bad choices. God is our Father who hears and responds even in our darkest moments. So what's heavy on your heart today? What is it that you need today? It's okay to ask God for what you need. The Bible tells us, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. We need to ask God to work in our hearts to make us more like him so that whatever we want is actually what he wants. We live in a very complex world. It's a very confusing world, it feels like. But prayer is the key to living with hope. Paul commands us in 1 Thessalonians, as we have just heard earlier, that we are to pray without ceasing. That means that we are to pray and never give up. We need to ask God to work in our lives. We are to ma maintain an attitude of awareness at all times, awareness that God is constantly present with us. Awareness that he is consistently providing and empowering us to do good things. For your Father in heaven, he knows what you need before you even ask. We know for certain, as we are gathered here together, that he is the loving Father who hears and who responds. Thank you.